Uh, I think the policies are more or less the same. That is uh, making sure investors uh, have uh, access to African markets and make their profits and repatriate their profits. Uh, generally, it's not very good for Africa because more or less the, the flow of foreign income each year is more or less the same of the flow of profit repatriated uh, from Africa to the rest of the world. Uh, I think the compact is a document which has been made only uh, for the investors. It's just uh, an investor approach and it's not at all a de uh, document for development or a document which could be of uh, <coughs> benefit to Africa because it relies on the assumption that uh, Africa lacks investment. <coughs> but this is not the problem. Uh, you have investment, foreign direct investment in Africa, but this foreign direct investment generally uh, does not help Africa develop domestic capabilities, develop agriculture, industry, and uh, also enlarge the domestic market. Because generally uh, the foreign tech investment is located in uh, extractive sectors. You take for example the case of um, Equatorial Guinea, it's the richest country in Africa in terms of uh, GDP per, per capita. But uh, you will see half of the GDP is controlled by multinationals and half of the GDP is transferred each year to, to the rest of the world. This is the kind of uh, de so-called development we have with foreign tech investment. Uh, it's difficult to have demands uh, uh, addressed to the to the to the GV, G20 because ordinarily uh, their preparation is not focused on Africa development, but for strategic interests, for capitalist interests, things like that. Uh, because if you want to have a current uh, policy towards Africa. Uh, we have to uh, go against uh, the logic of uh, free trade, free enterprise, and what is so-called uh, God governance, uh, things like that. But this is the <clears throat> theoretical framework under which those countries of the G20 work. And this framework could not help Africa develop. Mm, what would be necessary is to have uh, coalitions of um, progressive forces, let's say in Africa as well as in Europe and other parts of the world, to change how this um, globalization um, works. I think this is the uh, agenda of what is called uh, alter globalism. And uh, I think we have to find ways for these alter globalist forces to, to have the upper hand on the log neoliberal logic um, under which, which we live, I think. Uh, regarding the G20, I do not have uh, much expectations. I just expect standard rhetoric about the need to help uh, develop Africa, so on, but without much uh, result. In fact, uh, the concept of um, G20 reminds me of uh, ancient Greece Athens, because sometimes when the democracy was in crisis, there were people coming to take the power, and they have some special names. For example, the tyranny of the 30s. And the G20 reminds me that the tyranny of the, of the 20s, more or less. So I, uh, I expect much more fruitful things. Uh, uh, at the counter summit of Ambo, because um, I know there will be some uh, demonstrations, some manifestations here against the G20 and also the summit uh, in Ambo. And it's uh, a proof of solidarity that people here are um, mobilizing for another kind of world, another types of um, 
solidarity and people are uh, demonstrating uh, on their own terms it's not african people or people from asia who came here tell them uh, demonstrate for us. No, they do it and uh, this is something uh, we as uh, African uh, citizens are very proud of and we are naturally encouraging it. In fact, uh, what we can do to change this uh, current uh, world system uh, where there is more and more inequality, economic inequalities, but also uh, inequalities uh, <clears throat> in, in, in terms of power. Because uh, we have to try to create a space, political space, economic space, so that uh, the most vulnerable countries, the most vulnerable citizens of the world could try some, somehow to uh, expect uh, better conditions of living. I think we must try to focus on that.